pay attention. You're looking for capitals. Patrick Martin is a newly qualified teacher at Chiswick Community School in West London. As a music teacher, he finds the practical aspects very difficult to control and has asked teaching consultant John Bailey for help with both his Year 9 groups. What we're going to be looking at today is composing a bass line for a chord sequence that you're going to be given. Um, and we're going to be sort of developing that in various ways in today's lesson. Can I have absolute attention, please, Andre? Thank you. Faisal, we're starting a new topic today, which is on um, sequencing and developing your sequencing skills, Helena, using Cubasis. Now, unfortunately, we've got a problem today, which is that the keyboards that we normally have in this room um, are being repaired at the moment so that we can have really good, smooth lessons on them from next week onwards, but they're still at the repair shop now. So this task, which will sort of get us warmed up, will help us to, will help us to revise some keyboard skills, and we'll start us thinking about bass lines, which we're going to be using, which we're going to be using um, when we do our sequencing on cue basis. How do you feel about the beginning of the lesson? Can you shut up, please? I noticed all the sort of pausing and, and the kind of stopping and starting and um, perhaps, you know, not flowing enough. OK, yeah, well, I think that's right. And, and also, um, don't beat yourself up. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, you've got them in, you've got them settled down, you're clearly in command of the room. You might want to be a bit more sort of flowing in your commands. Yeah. The first note that you play is the note that's written down on the sheet and that will form a pattern which you can play with three fingers of one hand which will look something like this on the keyboard. I like that visual demonstration a lot. Andre, that's what we've written there. I'm just going to play you an example of what's on here. You see some of that wriggling and, and yeah. the stuff that's going on in Boyland down there. Um, that kind of wriggling is beginning to tell you, isn't it, that, that, that you've got about three or four minutes presentational time sure. left. OK. Now, I would expect um, everyone in the class to attempt to play the simplest bass line using the note from the chord, the main note from the chord. Terry, can you just explain to me what the um, task is? A bass line, and you're going to be using notes from, notes from the chords. OK. I'm really glad you, you got a, a, one or two children to repeat back to you what it is they're meant to be doing. But I would have liked to see th this happen about four or five minutes earlier. Right. There are three things that you're going to do by the end of this lesson. You're going to do a chord sequence, you're going to do a bass line for it, and some of you are going to extend the bass line. Andre, what are you going to be doing? Susan, what are you going to be sure. doing? Does everybody know what the three things are that you need to have by the end of the lesson? Is there anybody in here with the smokiest doubt about what it is we're doing? Also, if you use a bit more praise and recognition of, of the children who got things right, it means you've got a, a little bit more of an alert audience sitting up trying to find other ways to please you. I'd like to give you about 20 minutes um, to work on this. I might be stopping you at some point during that time, Helena, in order to sort of give you the whole class some extra guidance if I find that there's general problems. Now, when that happens, I'm going to be asking you to remove your headphones and turn around to face the middle of the room. You should be able to do that in about 30 seconds, mm -hmm. OK, by the, from when I give the instruction. And then I'll quickly give you a bit more advice, and then you can get back to work, not waste any time. I'd like you to make it even more formulaic. Yeah, I'd like them to be your standard routines. Right. Yeah, what's our standard routine for when we're playing the keyboard? What's the standard routine for when I come and talk to you? Andre, you can face the front, please. He told me to try and at some point, he needs closing in and say, you know, Andre, you're going to be a success in my room, but tell me what the three things are you need to remember to make this a good lesson. And if we've done it right, he's going to remember, keep the volume low, take my headphones off, and then you can say, that's my man, everything's going to be all right. Um, but what you're doing at the moment, you're, you're kind of running a, having a kind of running sniping match with him. One, two, three, four. Together, four, one, two, three, four, and E, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've got to go 
and see someone else for a second. Keep practicing that to get it absolutely in time. And then you can start thinking about adding other notes um, following these notes. Uh, excuse me, boys. This is the bit where I feel it's like spinning plates. Sort of getting them on task and keeping them on task and having to sort of be concentrating on one pair and then I see that something else is going to... And then there's a sort of conflict there as well because I want to get around and see everybody in a sort of systematic way and that's one of the things I find difficult here. That's A, yeah. And then use that there, yeah, fine. So E, yeah. Okay. Then what you can try and do is play that in one hand and do the bass line here, which is just a single note with the same notes in the other hand. Like that. That could be maybe what you can get up to by the end of the lesson. OK. Um, Andre. Andre. No, you don't need to be getting out of your seat. If you've got a problem, you can put his hand up. So come around and help. Right. Yeah. What do I have to do? Right. Um, you. I'm doing the chords. You're doing the chords. In that case, if you just swap places. <laughs> right. Andre, I've had about enough of you. Can you go outside, please? Because we're going to start. Outside, please, Andre. And you need to come back after school, after registration, to talk about this. <laughs> Watch, eh? OK. The discipline code, I notice that you scarcely use it. Mm. That's something that I've... I haven't really been consistent over, over the term or over the you know, term and a half that I've, that I've been here. Um, if I'm using a system, I've got several options. Yeah. One is I can look across the room and rather theatrically write a name. I don't have to go over there to control the behaviour. I get the pen out and, and get your mm -hmm. name down. Secondly, I can move in to you quietly and I can say, um, Bloggins, I've had to write your name down. Mm. The next step will be a tick and that would mean seeing me after the lesson. Mm. Tell me what you need to do to avoid this happening. And, and so it, it gives you the basis for, for a dialogue. Excuse me. Can you move on wherever you're supposed to be? I'm going to have you coming back inside, but just standing by the door. I'm going to have you coming back inside, please. We often do in departments, rather than put children out, is we'll, put you, is we'll freeze them in a colleague's room or a colleague can put a child in our room. Yeah. If you know you're going to have X this afternoon yeah. and they yeah. sometimes kick off, yeah. then you say to your colleague, um, if it comes to it, yeah. um, you might be getting a visit from X about 20 yeah. minutes after the lesson starts. Sure. Um, and so you're sitting in the room there confident. You've got a strategy. Yeah. You're trying to stop it from happening, but if it does have to happen, um, then you can just lean across yeah. and say, I think you need to go to Mr. Sons. Yeah. Room. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure, you know, that support will be there. Because um, my, you know, my head of department is very good in that way. But I, I think I'm just a bit shy for, in asking for it. If because you've got tough classes, there's a problem going on. It's not just your problem. Yeah. It belongs to the department, it belongs to the pastoral team. It's yeah. everybody's problem. Can I hear a few performances? Um, <laughs> I don't think that's very funny. Let's have Jack and Luke, please. OK, thank you. Very good. Um, can someone tell me, please? There's a lot of children who want to applaud. You don't encourage that, do you? I didn't this lesson, though. I guess, no, I don't think I generally do. Maybe I'm worried that it's going to sort of yeah. then result in a lot of yeah, general yeah, noise, which then needs yeah, to be... Yeah, you don't have to do it all the time. OK, thank you very much. OK, another reasonably effective performance. Can someone please...? Um... <laughs> OK, now you've performed, can you turn that off, please? Turn your chairs back around. I Thank don't you. necessarily believe myself when I'm seeing myself praising. When I do do it, it seems quite a bit low-key, a bit 
like I'm moving on to the next thing mm. or something like that, just brushing over it. Remember that, that praising more is a technical issue. You're winning affiliation, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're prolonging their attention span, um, you're giving off-task children uh, or, or defiant children a different route to your attention. So it's not a moral question, it isn't a question of being nicey-nicey. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a, a very important teaching tool. Bye, sir. Bye, see you next week, Harry. <laughs> John Bailey's been watching Patrick teach the same lesson to another Year 9 class. Patrick's giving even clearer instructions and is being more generous with his praise. <laughs> so I'd like to hear now how far most of you have got. Now, for those of you who are playing, who are going to perform now, it's an opportunity to perform to the whole class. For the rest of you, Charlotte, when another person is playing, I'd like you to make sure you're really listening to them. And what I'd like you to listen out for is what are the two or three people in the group playing? Who's playing the chord sequence? Who's playing the bass line? Um, are they playing the chords in a straight sort of one, two, three, four rhythm? Or have they changed the rhythm? OK, let's have um, three girls here, please. Applause, then. <laughs> Got to talk about this one first. So that was very good as well. Uh, really nice it in time. What was? Um, how many notes was Jade playing in the bass line? Four. Anyone tell me? Three. Five. Three. All right, Shannon. Your first guess. Four was correct. There were two notes that you were playing on the A chord, the A and the C, and two notes that you were playing on the E chord, the E and the G. Um, and that was very good. You could add more notes later on, perhaps, if you wanted to. Um, what you'll also be able to do next week, actually, is add sort of drum beats and stuff, um, insert sort of pre-recorded drum loops and turn it into a sort of piece of dance music or something like that. That's where we're going with this. OK, we're going to have Mikar and Michael next. I could see that um, you know, you're wanting to jazz it up, you're wanting to do your own thing there. And you'll find that a lot easier when we have um, key bases and you can record things like that in, sort of copy them, paste them around, and come up with your own piece. And I think that's going to be really good. Um, you've got the chord sequence there, you've got the bass line, you're trying different rhythms. That's all good stuff. OK, tuck your chairs underneath, please. Stand behind them. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> see you next week. Well done. Really good today. Who's that? Yes. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. There's some really good musicians in this class, as you saw. Yeah, there's a pretty um, good teacher here as well. <laughs> <laughs>